Welcome to the Sunbird Crochet Podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from Germany. I just came home from work and I am trying to catch the last light of the day. So this might be short. We will see how fast I can get through today's episode. I have one finished object for you, which is the movie and stitch challenge project for the movie Jane Eyre. I also have two works in progress for you today. One is a crochet project, the other is a knitting project. And then we will draw today's yarn from my Halloween advent calendar or my Halloween calendar. And I have two extra videos for you. One about my excursion and the other about the garden. I went to visit my relatives and they have a lovely big garden, but more about this later. So let's start with a finished object. It's a little shawlet and it's meant, let me take this off, it's meant to go around me like this and then I can tie it together here in the front and I've made this because I ordered a special dress like a fancy dress maybe <laughs> it's a regency style dress including the undergarments which go with it and a spencer jacket but in case i don't wear the spencer jacket i could wear this little shawlette and i can tie it here in front of me so that it doesn't come loose. And uh, for this project, which is a little bit unusual, I admit, um, I thought this would be perfect because it, it runs with a theme. This is the movie and stitch project, as I said, and the movie I'm talking about is Jane Eyre. And there are several versions of the Jane Eyre plot being filmed. There is a version with Kieran Hines, I believe. Then there's one with... Um, yeah, blank. <laughs> Heard? I'm sure I will put the name up here. And then there is a BBC version, which is not a one evening movie. It's uh, three or four parts. It's more like a serial with Toby Stevens, who is the son of Maggie Smith, who you probably know from Downton Abbey. She plays the Dowager. Her son is a very well-known actor as well. And he played Mr. Rochester in the BBC adaptation of Jane Eyre. And this is a really great version and adaptation. But for the movie and stitch project, I rewatched and will rewatch again for the second time because it's a great movie. I rewatched the version with Michael Fassbender and he's a very intense actor. Maybe you know him from the, is it the Marvel, Marvel Universe movies? But he is a much better character player, very intense. And for me, he's the perfect Mr. Rochester, who is very much a dark, character or a character with a dark past. Um, I think I will talk about the movie in chapters almost because the movie itself is 
in, in chapters. It starts with Jane Eyre being 10 years old and she's living, she's orphaned and she's living with her aunt or the wife of her uncle who is was the brother of her mother. <laughs> that sounds like extra information which isn't necessary. She's living as an orphan with a relative and this Mrs. Reed is treating her very badly. She discourages her children to, to socialize with Jane. She's very much on her own in this household and on a there is a specific event where she is locked up in the room where her uncle died um, and she faints because she is imagining seeing his ghost. And this triggers the next chapter in which she is living in a school for orphan children. It's called the Lowood School and the headmaster, Mr. Brocklehurst, is a very unpleasant person. It's not a good experience she has there either. Um, her uncle already had died of typhus and typhus will again be prominent in this school. In fact, she loses the only friend she had in that school because of typhus. After this, or because of this epidemic, of the typhus epidemic, Mr. Brocklehurst has to leave the school and the School is now run by better teachers and Jane spends her next eight years there first as a pupil and then later as a teacher. And as such, she gets the opportunity to become a governess for the child of a Mr. Rochester. Mr. Rochester lives in a manor house called Formfield and he has a dark secret. Jane Eyre, she, Jane is not allowed to go into certain parts of the house and the housekeeper, Mrs. Fairfax, is actually looking after the first and, sorry, spoiler alert, first wife or current wife of Mr. Rochester, who is insane and dangerous. She actually puts fire to the house and Jane can rescue Mr. Rochester from the fire but I that, that's far <laughs> that's far in the future before that happens Jane actually falls in love with Mr. Rochester because he has a very interesting side the two meet on the street in the half dark because when she arrived Mr. Rochester isn't at home only Adele um, who is it's not actually his child she's, she's not his daughter but he's looking after her so <laughs> let me get the, get my thoughts together again so jane arrives at Thornfield, and she is looking after adele and one day she wants to bring away a post or something and she meets a dark stranger on a horse who um, the horse actually bolts and the rider falls on the ground and this rider is Mr. Rochester and she helps him up and he's swearing like <laughs> like hell and um, she helps him up and then later they find that they actually live in the same household and he's her employer and yeah he has this dark secret he's he's very broody as well and at the same time he is looking very lovingly and caringly after Adele and quite obviously he's also interested in Jane. They have a mutual interest in each other. Nevertheless, he is bringing a party of friends into his house. Amongst those people is a young woman who wants to become the next Mrs. Rochester. No one knows that he's actually already married and he is he's enjoying the attention but he ultimately can't marry this young woman especially since he's already falling for Jane as well. 
so Jane becomes quite despondent because of this young woman and is taken by surprise when Mr. Rochester proposes to Jane herself. Um, she says yes and even though Mrs. Fairfax warns her, she wants to go ahead with the wedding but but there is another visitor, a guy called Mason, and he's the brother of the current Mrs. Rochester. And he interrupts the wedding of Jane and Mr. Rochester and tells everyone that he already has a wife. And Jane can't understand that her beloved Mr. Rochester would betray her in that way. And he tries to justify himself by telling her or showing her the wife he keeps locked up in a room for her own safety because she's quite insane and she wanders around at night and in fact she had started the fire previously um, but Jane runs away across the moor and is then found by three siblings two girls or two women and the brother, St. John. And she lives with them. She becomes the teacher of, or she starts a local school and she becomes the teacher. And St. John is very pious and religious and he wants to become a, a missionary and wants to take her with him. So he wants to go to India and quite tries to pressurize Jane into marrying him and going to India with him. At the same time, Jane is actually inheriting a large sum of money from an uncle who died. And in fact, the two young women and St. John, their brother, is, turns out to be a relative or a, a far relative but a relative of hers as well. So they divide the money amongst themselves and she's she's con she's thinking about joining St. John on his trip to India, but ultimately she realizes that her place belongs with Mr. Rochester, married or not. One night she hears Mr. Rochester's voice amongst the moor, or she thinks so, and that is the ultimate trigger for her to return to Thornfield. And what she finds there is a burnt down Thornfield because the crazy Mrs. Rochester has been putting fire to the house and she died in the fire. And Jane only finds Mrs. Fairfax at the house and she already feels that Mr. Rochester died as well, but he lost eyesight or part of his eyesight during the fire and now lives in a cottage nearby and she goes to him and it's a very moving scene because he can't see her but he realizes that there is a person near him and at first he can't quite believe that it's really Jane the love of his life and it's very romantic and um, it's a happy ending for Jane and for Mr. Rochester at least. <laughs> and his eyesight gets better, a little better, and they have children and they live happily ever after. Kind of not such a happy ending for the first Mrs. Rochester. <laughs> what I really enjoy about this movie is the special connection between Jane and Mr. Rochester, who both never experienced love they never had been loved by another and they never loved someone else before they met. And when they meet, it's like chemistry. He's far from being perfect. He's dark. He has a past. He, he has had a first wife who he locked up. It's all very difficult, but... It all works out in the end and that's what we all hope for, for that special connection and that it will all work out in the end. 
So I can recommend the version with Michael Fassbinder and Mia. Oh, what's her name? I can't pronounce this. I will put up her name up here. The movie is based on a book written by Charlotte Bronte and it was published in 1847. It has been adapted for film, radio, television and has inspired a number of rewritings and interpretations. Here it starts the one I watched 1996 with William Hurt and Charlotte Gainsborough. Then we have 1997, a year later with Kieran Hines and Samantha Morton. Those were the two others I already mentioned. Then there is the 2011 version, which I just talked about, with Mia Wasikowska as Jane and Michael Fassbender as Rochester and Judy Dench, Lady Judy Dench as Mrs. Fairfax. For the television, the list is long as well, just like radio. The 2006 Jane Eyre BBC series starring Ruth Wilson as Jane and Toby Stevens as Rochester. I never read the book. I don't know how it, the movie adaptation, the 2011 movie adaptation compares to the book, but I imagine that it would be quite close to the original plot. I think that's all I can talk about right now, especially since Jane Eyre is very well known. You probably know it much better than I do. So tonight I will re-watch this movie, or rather my favorite bits. And by the way, this pattern is, I started again with a frost shawl, which has so many ways of adaptations as well, just like Jane Eyre. So until here it's the frost shawl and then I just increased to make the ruffles and I made a chain here to have the ties for the front. The dress I ordered, if you're interested in this, in a Jane Eyre style custom made dress and the stays to go with it to give this bust and also the rest of the undergarments as well as a Spencer jacket. If you're interested in this, I will leave down in the show notes. <laughs> I will leave links down in the show notes. Yes, don't ask me why I want to buy these things. And before we run out of battery, I will have to change location and I will see you in a moment. So here we are at the old location. Let me just talk about my works in progress before we run out of light here. I started my first project from the Murad magazine, which is the Zivu sweater. And I haven't, <laughs> I'm not very far into it. Um, you can see if I hold it up, you can see that it's a little bit meshy. But if I wear something underneath, then you can see the, the texture shows up much better. And at first I thought it was my own mistake, but this is, well, it is probably my mistake because I didn't use the yarn they used. They are use, they're holding a four ply yarn and a lace weight mohair yarn together, which the mohair would probably fill the gaps quite easily. I'm using a Lana Cossa yarn here, which is quite fluffy as well. This is my first color and you can see that it's quite fluffy. And the other one is uh, the same yarn, just a different color. The other yarn is lighter green. And I have high hopes that this will work out anyway. Or it might even close up a little during blocking. So this is my the start, the beginning of my Cebu sweater. Now, now my other work in progress 
is the knit project and well if you don't want to get spoiled it's the west knit west knits mystery knit along 2021 the shawlography shawl and the ish the clue number one was issued last friday the next clue will come this friday i believe and i'm already way behind but i don't care i just take my own time so if you don't want to get spoiled how it looks like then please just skip ahead a couple of i will probably i will leave a timestamp down below so you know where to click on when you can skip all of the knitting project spoilers so this is my current state of the shallography. We started here with the middle bit, which is an I-cord wedge kind of little thing here with color A. And then I'm adding wedges here along here and um, blocking will definitely open this up very well. And I already love it. I love my color choices. Um, this one here is the color Flores Lava. That color here is Frau Odersocke. This one as well. They look quite similar from afar, but this is more pinky, salmony pink, and this is more like a violet pink. And this yarn here is the dark one, is also Frau Odersocke. And can you spot my where I went wrong? Yes, it's this stripe here, because I had finished the dark section stripe and then I got distracted and I couldn't remember if I had already done the section or not. And a, a proper knitter would have seen that, but I can't read my knitting. So <laughs> this stripe here is double the size. But in the end, don't stress. <laughs> I will just keep on. There's no way I'm going to frog this. And at the moment, I'm here with this lovely color here, which is Bright Loki, also from Punk Rock Unicorn, just like that down here. And the, the yarn base is Cody. It has uh, cashmere, I believe, in it. I think. So I can't wait. I think this is especially great here, this turquoise. I love this. So, yeah. That's how far I am with my shallography knitting project. Last but not least, I thought I would open the bag of minis and we're going to draw another color. Oh, I looked inside. That's cheating. Let's take this one here. That's a dark one, but lovely as well. So there we go. That's today's color. What else can I talk about? I've been away for a couple of days last weekend and I've been to Herford to visit some relatives. It's a very interesting city. Quite underestimated, I would say. It says Hansestadt Herford, which means they were part of a Hanse, like Lübeck and Hamburg and Rostock, all the big harbor cities where this, how to explain the Hanse? Um, I will put the, some information in the shell notes as well. It's all about trade. And it's they were very rich, these cities. Yeah, so um, Herford was surprisingly also a Hansestadt. Hansa City. And they have very old houses there. My cousin showed me around the city center or parts of it. You will see some old houses from the 16th century. And there is especially one with the seven sins uh, depicted in wood carvings on the outside of the house. On the far right is the devil. And then you have the seven sins. Personally, 
I don't know which one is which. Um, I probably couldn't even tell you or name you the seven deadly sins. <laughs> I'm not very religious. Um, but they looked funny. One is... One is... <laughs> oh, just have a look. I will put the video in here. you enjoyed this excursion did you see that that bridge with a view onto the river um, up the river you could just see the old spot where the mill has been and there was the deepest part of the river and they used to tie up the women who was who were tested for being a witch and they pushed them into that deepest part of the river and if they sunk then they weren't a witch but they were dead. And if they floated, then they were a witch and they were killed. Great choice. <laughs> yeah, so that is the old side of the witch testing. And yeah, there were some lovely, 
lovely houses, different styles, different from different times, from different historical periods. Um, and the church you saw is part of the Santiago de Compostela route. Like pilgrims, they would go to that church and they can get a stamp into their pilgrim leaflet, pamphlet, whatever they have when they go to Santiago de Compostela to prove that they have been there. I didn't just take footage of the city center, but I also took some footage of the garden. The partner of my cousin has a big garden. He has in there strawberries, who were all eaten by the deer. <coughs> then he had a big harvest of carrots so he were he, he just had taken them all out of the earth and he was cleaning them and cutting the bits off where they were the, well you know what i mean and so all the good carrots were going to be prepared for for the, for, for storage and for eating and then he has I don't know all the English words. I will say the German word and then I will put the English word for it up on the screen. So he had Mangold, Wirsing, and pumpkins, Kürbisse, Butternut, Kürbisse, and also Zucchini. And what else did I see there? Oh yes, Grünkohl. And Grünkohl, you have to wait until they've been in the first frost of the year. And only after the first frost you can actually harvest Grünkohl and eat them. And it's quite tasty together with boiled pot potatoes and a good sausage. Mm. Yes. You also see their cat. It's a farm cat, which means she's not allowed to go into the house. They have a part of the house is actually like a barn and they have big balls of hay in there and they made like a hole in the hay for the cat. Actually, they have two cats, but I only saw one. It's called Beanie and she was giving us company all the time in the garden. They also have budgies. They built a big shed just for the budgies and they also get little chicks, budgie chicks. And um, they have a greenhouse and there they had tomatoes and cucumbers mainly. That's what I saw. Uh, but it's already quite late in the season, so most of them were already gone and eaten. And they had some lovely yellow raspberries and lots, tons of apples and pears on the trees. And basically they don't have to go shopping because they have it all in their garden. Then I also took some footage of the old baking house. Um, there's a little like a door on the bottom right, which is a green door. And he explained to me that this is where the pigs used to go inside. It's, it's warm in a baking house, so I would think that they liked it there. But it's still secluded or separate from the rest of a baking house. And the baking house was obviously for baking bread. And then we were also in the big barn. Uh, where he had all his hay stored and up in the loft they have a box for like a nesting box for the owl which lives there and they also have a box for bats and also boxes for birds so it's all very it's it's quite remote and in the countryside and I really enjoyed this time there because I was totally cut off from everything which usually stresses me. 
so it was really a nice trip so let me just put in here a little video of a garden like to say goodbye to you for now. I'm sure I will be more productive in the near future. I had a bit of a problem with my thumb which kept me from crocheting and this is the main reason why my projects haven't seen much love these days. But I will be back soon enough and I hope that you are enjoying the cozy autumn time or fall as you say it in America, and yeah, brew yourself a nice cup of tea, enjoy your evening. So keep well, keep safe, and I'm going to see you soon.